All right, here we go. Brand new Flyers Daily, and uh, welcome to the month of March. 15 games in 30 days, beginning tonight in D.C. Flyers Daily, as always, presented by Ticketmaster. Make more memories live. This episode, we're going to do a quick preview, Flyers and Caps tonight. And then we're going to get to Phantoms head coach Ian LaPerriere, who I had a chance to talk to yesterday about a litany of topics about development, about resiliency in young players, about the development of some of the guys he had, like Cam York or Tyson Forster and others, and the development of some guys that he currently has, like Samu Tamala, like Emil Andre and others. So we'll talk to Lappy in just a second, but Flyers and the Caps tonight. Caps come into the game, 58 games played, 27, 22, and 9, 63 points, sitting in the fifth spot in the Metropolitan Division. And uh, with 63 points, six, pa- six points back of the third spot, which is the Flyers, 60 games played, 31, 22, and 7, 69 points, 6, 3, and 1 in the Flyers' last 10. Caps are 5, 3, and 2. And their last 10, and they did lose their last one coming into this game. Flyers won their last one uh, with that win over the 6 2 win over the Tampa Bay Lightning. Very impressive win, very impressive third period for the Flyers. In the Caps' last game, they gave up an eight spot to the Detroit Red Wings on the road. They lost that game eight to three. Now, as always, when you're facing the Caps, you have to deal with Alexander Ovechkin. And when you look at his stat line for the year, it's almost like, wow, I, if Father Time finally caught up in 55 games, Alex Ovechkin isn't a point-per-game player. He's got 43 points. He's their leading point-getter and tied with Dylan Strom, who in, has 43 points in 58 games. But the Caps don't have anybody close to a point-per-game. Ovechkin on the year, 16 goals, 27 assists, 43 points. He is a minus 23 Only seven power play goals, 10 power play assists, and his shooting percentage is really where it's at here at 8.3%, known as one of the great shooters of all time in the game. Uh, When you see that shooting percentage on Ovi, you kind of go, whoa, that's that's pretty wild. You didn't expect to see that, but that's the situation. I mean, Ovechkin at this point, 38 years of age, he'll be 39. Even last year, his shooting percentage, 14.3. Year prior, 15, 13.2, 15.4. I mean, for his career, it's 12.8. He's only shot in the single digits shooting percentage one other time in his career. That was back in 2010-11 when he had 32 goals in 79 games, and the shooting percentage was 8.7%. But the Caps uh, are the opponent tonight, and I don't care if he's 38. I don't care if he's 58. When Alexander Ovechkin is playing against the Flyers, you better be careful. So uh, he'll be a focus, as always, when you face the Washington Capitals till the moment he retires. We're going to get into a conversation maybe tomorrow about Ovechkin and being a generational player. I got an email from a guy that really was taken back that I called Ovechkin a generational player. We'll make the case. I also had a discussion the other day because I said that Austin Matthews is a superstar, but not a generational player. I had a little roundtable discussion, impromptu, with Jim Jackson, John LeClaire, and uh, who else was with us? Somebody else was with us. Oh, with uh, Brian Boucher about Austin Matthews and is he generational? I think he's like 250 points in the rears to Connor McDavid and about 110 points in the rears uh, to uh, Nikita Kucherov in the last seven years. I made the case that I don't think he is. But John LeClaire, one of the great goal scorers in NHL history, had a few of 50, a few seasons of 50 or more. Um, he said he was generational. So we'll have that discussion on another day. Today, we dedicate this episode to Ian LaPerriere. Great to catch up with Lappy. It's been far too long since I hit him up. Uh, wanted to check in as we get towards the trade deadline. We could be see, seeing some of these Phantoms players getting called up, like yesterday, for example. Cal Peterson goes through waivers, up comes... Uh, Felix Sandstrom, and also Ronnie Adderd is going to return to the Flyers. We'll see if he's in the lineup tonight. If he is, that'll be the 11th defenseman that the Flyers have played this year. I don't know that there's ever been a team that's dressed 11 defensemen and made the playoffs. Here are the 11. I'm going to do this off the top of my head. Travis Sanheim, Cam York, two. 
Sealer and Walker, four. Stahl, Zamula, that's six. Rasmus Ristolainen, that's seven. Um, Louis Belpedio, Victor Mete played one game. Emil Andre played a game. That's 10. And if Ronnie Adder plays, that'll be 11. That's insane. Who goes 11 deep and still makes the playoffs? It's pretty wild. Oh, I didn't even count Jamie Drysdale. So there's another one. Um, amazing. Um, so we'll see if we see Ronnie Adder on that right side uh, with that big shot. Remember that goal he scored against Jack Campbell when Campbell was playing for the Leafs and he went short side off the rush. wonder what Ronnie Adder will be like with this high-flying rush offense for the Flyers. Maybe something that suits them. Uh, we shall see. But let's get to the Phantoms head coach. Had a chance to catch up with Ian LaPerrier yesterday and check in on a lot of subjects. I think everybody's going to enjoy this conversation. So here's my conversation with Lappy. It is a brand-new edition of Flyers Daily, and we have not checked in with this guy in a while. And uh, I woke up yesterday. I just said, I, I got to talk to Lappy. So wouldn't you know it, there he is. Lapp, how you doing? I'm good. How you doing, bud? Good. Uh, how's it been for the year for you? Like, you know, the grind of the season. We're about ready to, you know, we're turning the calendar to March, if you can believe it. Uh, how's the season been for you? Good. You know, we had some uh, good stretch, showcase stretch. We just, uh, it's like you said, it's a grind. And uh, working with those kids and try to make them better and uh, try to win. That's the main goal. We want to, you know, develop those kids and a winning environment, and uh, we've been doing a little bit of that. We're in, uh, you know, two points behind uh, Springfield for the last play in the playoffs and got game in hands, but we have to win those. So we try to stay in the moment, try to stay day by day, and try to get points. That, being in that battle, you know, where points are so important and the details of the game and the little things will matter so much, I imagine you like that, that pressure cooker that some of the young guys are in right now. I think it's great for them. It's great for my staff. It's great for the players just to uh, play for something every day. And I said that in the past. I said that last year. It seems to be like uh, we're always in a race. Last year was the same thing. You know, it's such a tough division here. And and uh, I think it's only going to benefit those kids down the road, you know, just to go through it here before they go through with the big club. Yeah, yeah, and you're kind of seeing the same thing with the big club right now. Let me ask you about that from a development standpoint. You know, playing meaningful games. We we looked at last season with the Flyers, and it became obviously playing out the string. You, you knew you weren't going to the playoffs. That pressure is released. But having to now, as a pro, compete under that pressure, what does that do for development? I, I think it's great. You look at you look at guy like uh, you know Zamula, Tyson Forrester, all those kids that are with the big club right now. They're going through that uh, you know race right now or whatever, like the battle to make the playoffs, and they they don't they, they've been through it before at a different level. But you have to go through it here before you get you, you go through it with the big club. And I feel like uh, maybe uh, what they went through last year might help them a little bit, maybe tiny tiny bit. But at the end of the day, if it helps them, that's uh, that's what the American League uh, is here for. And uh, I feel like watching Tyson Zimula and you know all those guys that are up there, Urson. Urson was a huge Yorkie. Urson was a huge part of that last year, and right now it's. You know, we feel like he's been. Obviously, it's a different league. It's, it's three times better than the AHL, maybe four times. You know, there's such a big step. But the the, the feeling that um, knowing I've been there before in a different level only is gonna. You know, it's helping those kids right now, and it's gonna be the same thing for the future. To you know, like the, uh, you know, the Samu when he goes up at one point, the Denoyer when he goes up at one point, uh, Ginning when they go up. They're going through it here, and it's only going to make them better when they go to the next level. One of the things I've talked about quite a bit, Coots, is the identity of the Flyers, and, and you're building the identity down there as well. And it's to play the game in an honest way with um, accountability from the coaching staff and self-accountability, and it's led to, a, to players and, and an identity of resiliency. And I think I, I've talked about that on here, that I think that – identity and that makeup of a resilient player at the highest levels early in their career is so important because I think it's something you carry. I don't think it's a switch you can turn on when I turn 25. Um, if you have that resiliency at 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, then it's something that becomes part of your DNA as a player. How important is that resiliency to get it early that winning matters 
Well, it's huge. Obviously, it's huge, but also I think it started with who you draft. You know, you got to draft some character guys. Like at the end of the day, I take character over talent any day. You know, if the kids got both, well, you're even better. But uh, you want to, you know, and again, it's above my pay grade. I don't do the draft, but I feel like when you draft guys like Konechny, that's a guy who's got character. It doesn't matter. You know, he's great here, but he would. I my feeling, he would have been great anywhere. But when you do have a coach like Torts, who will make sure that you stay on the right path and you don't deviate from it, and he's honest with them, while well, just keep you on the right path. And I, that's what I love about Torts. You know, as a next player, like. I've hated player uh, coaches that uh, bullshit you. You know, like uh, they, mm-hmm. they play games with you, and you you know they're not telling you the truth. But towards it's not he's not that at all. He's going to tell you exactly how he feels. He's going to tell you the truth. If you don't like it, talk. You know, you better have a good argument because you know he's, he's straightforward. And I try to be the same here. Like that's who I am. That's what. I, that's how I coach. And I coach like that because I hated coaches that you know played games with you. And I I don't play games with my players. And uh, Torres does the same. And I think if it start from minor league, those kids are going to go to the next level. And when they get to Torres, they they're going to get used to you know the coach telling them the truth. And it goes a long way. But for me. You got to draft character, and I feel like you know, like they, 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 you're the your kid or world. That's a character guy. Like you know, he's he's. I think he's taking huge step this year. I watch from far. Obviously, I don't have time to watch every game, but when I do watch, I'm I'm proud of Yorkie and Zamula and all those. Like, Sison's a character guy. Urson, if anybody's got character, it's Urs. Like he, I we said we talked. I'm sure I told told you on your show last year, and I told everybody who wants to hear it. Urs got the hit, he's got the hit factor. He's yeah. got that thing between the ears, like yeah. he wants to be the guy. And, and right now, everybody sees it, but we saw it here at this level, and I'm so happy for all those guys. I think, you know, uh, my staff feel like they, they had a little bit, maybe a tiny, tiny part of it, but at least we helped them uh, get to the next level. I think you and your staff are a big part of it because um, I see errors come up, and he comes up last year, and he gets the opportunity, and he grabs it. And to, to me, with him, it's just such a a quiet, you know, steady confidence to him. And it's not just in his play lap. It's in his body language. Mm-hmm. You know, you see a goalie with bad body language. That's, that's just the bench sees that, you know. Sure. And he just, the way he carries himself and so chill, I think, is such a big element. You mentioned it's between his ears. And it is between his ears and it, it's in his in his hubris and in his belly. And to be honest, he's got everything going for him. Huh? Yeah, he does. <laughs> he's a great goalie, great looking kid. He's a sweet, he's got the blonde hair going. Like, what a life, you know, I'm after. But I'm all men are created that, equal, my I, ass. <laughs> yeah, no, we're both, that's coming from two ball guys right yeah. now. <laughs> With a crooked nose. Uh, but at the end of the day, like, I'm happy for him because he's a good human. You know what? Those Swedes, yeah. I got I got a bunch of Swedes here. They're a great human. And when good you know, when good things happen to good people, I can be happier. And, I'm, I'm, again, I'm watching from far, but I see the saves that he makes. And uh, it's, it's, I'm pretty proud of him. I'm happy for him. You mentioned Yorkie because you got your hands on him last year. Yeah. And the thing that's impressed me the most about him is his ability to hand handle NHL players on the rush. Mm-hmm. You know, the way he can defend them with his stick. And because of those feet, because of that ability to skate with such precision and under control, he never gets his body out of position. Yeah. See, so he's, he can check and get on the right side of a guy to check him and change that angle when he needs to, all because of those feet. Yeah, he's got great speed and he defends well with his speed. And uh, Gator did all the job with him last year. And I feel like Shazi is doing, a, you know, keep going to development. He's a, he's a young pup. He's 22, 23 years old or around that. So uh, there's still a lot of development. But he's he's um, he's improving. He's the, one of the guys with San, San, Sanheim, obviously. One of the defensemen that I'm very impressed with. You know, he's he's playing big minutes. He's playing heavy, he's playing heavy minutes. And uh He's, uh, you know, he's he's everything that everybody was talking about. It's funny, like uh, last year, everybody was uh, questioning that um, Cofield uh, 
you know, passing Cofield and everything. But I'm wondering if people are saying the same thing right now. But obviously, it's, that, that's what drove me nuts last year. You're comparing Apple to oranges. You know, one's a defenseman, the other one's a forward, the other one's score a lot of goals. And York is more complete defense, or he's becoming a complete defenseman. And yeah. I'm uh, right now the the the, 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 the the one we draft him at that spot looked pretty good. Yeah, the thing about him too is. He- he's just going to continue to get better. You, you just mentioned it. It takes a while for a D for at sure. the NHL level. Uh, uh, what did you do last year with Tyson? Because lap, he comes in last year, you know, he gets a cup of coffee. He scores a little bit, but he's come in this year and his play away from the puck, his board battles. I know he put on a lot of muscle and really worked his, his ass off in the off season to do so, but he's just been so so responsible all over the ice, even when he's not scoring. And for a guy that's scoring, sometimes that's the the catalyst to lead to confidence and play in all areas. But that's never suffered for him at all this season. Well, that's the thing we do here. Like at the end of the day, like those kids come to us because they were scores. Like you get a guy like Sam Utumala right now. You know, he's known as a goal scorer. We drafted him because of that. But they all come here with that, but they need to work. Uh, on details away from the puck. And Tyson was in the same boat. You know, Oli Lexo was in the same boat. Same with Sam, who this year is in the same boat. That's that's what I barked at. That's why I barked. We barked as a staff every day to make sure they're detail away from the puck. Like, and because I know, like, it's one thing to score goals, but if that's the only thing you do at the next level, you better be Ovechkin. You better be a guy who yeah. scored, like, 500 goals plus because there's more, way more to it, especially in today's game, than just scoring goals. You need to be able to be good away, good, good stick away from board work. You mentioned, and that's the big thing for us. It's like if you don't, if you're not good on the wall, well, you'll be stuck in your zone all night. Especially the way that the game is today, every team sends their defensemen. They're aggressive with a good gap, but they pinch. In our league, at the NHL level. It's the same thing. You better be good on the board because you won't come out of your zone. And uh, Thais came to us and he's, he had those bad habits. Not bad habits. Junior habits, I like to call them. Like, you know, yeah. they all have it. They all have it. I don't care who you are. You come back, you know, you go to junior, you dominate there, and you score goals every night. The coach doesn't care about the defensive part of it because you score four that night and you won four to three. You're minus two, but he doesn't care about that because he wins. At our level, that's when we get to clean up. We got to make sure we bark at that. And sometimes they, they don't agree with what we're saying, but we, I know when we know as a staff, that's what it takes to, to go at the next level and not only to go at the next level, to stay at the next level because – it's easy. It's easy. I shouldn't say it's easy, but it's e- it's easier to play two, three, four games and you know play on adrenaline. But when you get to seventy five, hundred games, well, you gotta do something that's gonna keep you there. And I feel like those kids that go up, and even you can go back to you know Ratcliffe and uh, Archson two years ago when they went up, it, it, they didn't look out of place because of those little details in their game that helped them play at the next level. And there's with Tyson, I feel like there's. Um, a willingness very young to bear down on those details. To me, yeah. that's a big, big element of it. But he knows. He's a smart kid. He knows that's what yeah. it takes for and, – and especially with a coach with torts, it's all about de- – who loves those little details inside the game. And he knows that if you want to play for torts and you want to play huge minutes like he did last game, you better be detailed. And and that's what the report I get from the fly, Flyers when at the beginning of the year Tyson had – he had a hard time finding the back of the net, but everybody was telling me he was the best forward on the team, even yeah. without scoring, because he was doing all those little things. So they know, they they notice, they know that's what it takes. And uh, now he's getting rewarded. He's getting creative offensively. What a goal the other night against Stanford! Yeah. That's that skill. That I didn't, I, we didn't thought him that. Trust me, that's that, <laughs> that came with him. Yeah, it came <laughs> with him. But that's why he's a first round pick because he had those skills. But. There's more to it, in the, especially in today's game, and I'm glad he's, he's doing well. And, and that's another great kid. He's, uh, he's got a super bright future in front of him. It, when, you, when you get young players, sometimes they sneak an extra bag on the plane. I, that's the way I refer to it. There's always some baggage there of, of some stuff that you wish he didn't put on the plane, and that's you know selfish play or not having those details. They all, they all have it, the baggage. They, they all have it, and that's yep. why it's that's why it's good to spend time here. Doesn't yep. matter if it's a month or two months, and you know it's good to come here, 
and clean up that stuff. It's a great league to do that. And Torch talks about it. It is a great league to clean up all that yeah. stuff and bring because at the next level, here we want to win. Don't get me wrong, I want to win here. But their their leash is a is a little bit or a lot longer than it is at the next level. Because in, in the NHL it's yeah, it's a winning, but you have to win every night. Yeah, you, you want to make the playoffs for you know it's it's the best league in the world. We do we do we do want to make the playoffs here too. But at the end of the day, those kids have a longer leash here, and I'll put them back out there even if they do make mistakes. But by doing that, we're teaching them in between for sure. Um, how do you balance that? That you know, like a guy like Bobby Brink, who who starts the season here, puts up some decent numbers, then he gets sent down. How do you balance that? Okay, we've got the elements of his game that we need to clean up and we need to tighten up um, with the human nature part of I'm being rejected, I'm being sent down. How do it you balance great. that? He was unbelievable. Came yeah. in with a huge smile on his face. I know I know Brinker for a couple of years. I coached him last year. Last year was a different Brinker. He came back from a, a surgery. And this year, you know, he came to camp, unbelievable camp. Uh, you know, he had a great start. A little dip. They sent it to us. He came in and he said he sat right in front of me, great smile on his face, happy to, to come here. I told him you're going to play tons. You just need to play the right way. That's all I'm asking you. And that's what he did. And you know, was he perfect? Nope. Nobody. None of those kids are perfect. And yeah. it's, a, it's a game of mistakes. Hockey is a game of mistakes. He put numbers. He did. He's a skilled kid. And he helped us win the game in, in Charlotte last weekend. Yeah. And uh, fortunately for him, you know, they 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 call him right back up and. But again, I can't emphasize enough. Like he came in with a smile on his face, just like Yorkie did last year. Yeah, he came back in. I would, you know, they're not happy. Nobody dreams to play for me. Trust me, I don't think it's yeah. personal, and I always say that I mean it. You know, when I played, I didn't dream to play for the the, the, the IHL back then, the, the American League coach back then. I wanted to play at the next level. But I gotta give those kids credit when they come to us. They have a smile on their, their face because they know they're gonna play. But my message to them. You'll play tons, but you got to play the right way. There's no yeah. way I'm just going to give you the ice without you att paying attention to the details. And were they perfect? No, they're not. But they try to do the right thing, try to play into the structure. And, you know, you do the right thing here. And guess what? A couple of weeks later, you're right back with the big club. And that's what happened to Brinker. Um, Samu Tamala, you know, a thing, you know, part of his development, it's been kind of up and down lap. And I think part of it was just being all over the place. He's bopping all over the world for a couple of years, but he's had that consistency this year and, you know, that comfortability knowing here's where I am. I'm not going somewhere else. He came in and he prepared. He's putting more muscle on his body and he's having a really good year for you. What, what have you seen out of Tuvalu this year? I said that at the beginning of the year, like, you know, he's ahead of what I thought it would be. You know, like, you know, you always, like last year, we had the same, I had the same worry with Lexo. You know, they come from a big ice to a smaller ice and guys come to you a little bit quicker. They pinch on you a lot, you know, a lot more than they do in Europe. But he came here comfortable and we knew each other from two years ago when he came to camp as an 18 year old, he didn't speak much English. This year's English improved. Unbelievable. I don't know what happened, but, and the, guy, the guys love him in the room, which you always, always help when guys, teammates love you. They're going to try to help you instead of pushing you if, you, if they don't like you. And um, he's had, he had a great first half. He's playing right now. He's one of those kids that have to battle through those uh, uh, tougher hockey, I like to call it. Like, you know, after Christmas, it's it's a big boy, big pants uh, hockey, if you want, like big boy pants hockey. And and right now, it's hard. those chances come a little bit harder because everybody's tighter defensively. He's got to battle through it. He's got to battle through his, uh, his coverage a little bit harder right now. And, and it's all it's all good. It's all part of the development. He's only going to come out better. You see, he, again, he's, um, he's, he's, he's not having as many chances that he did uh, maybe a month ago because it's a little bit tighter and that's for him yeah. to battle through that stuff. And, uh, I'm, again, you know, he works hard. And it's good. It's going to turn around. He hasn't scored as much as he did at the beginning of the year. We need him to score, especially losing Lexo and Brink and all. And Lashinsky has been hurt for a while. So we need him to step up, but again, you want to step up, but you don't want to uh, <clears throat> cheat the game and uh, let the defensive part of your game uh, go away either. Uh, let's talk about Emil Andre because I I know you love you know the disposition of the kid the, the mental way he plays the game and he can push the pace with that pass and 
Uh, he's a short guy, but he's like he's a stocky plug, right? Um, what has he learned this year? Um, because I saw him in a, one of the Flyers games that he played. In, he played in four of them, one of the 10 defensemen that played for the Flyers so far this year. And I, I think he got some lessons on, oh, boy, when I hit a guy here, he may look vulnerable, but he's big and strong still, and he can do some damage even if I'm trying to deliver. What have you seen out of his development and his learning process playing against – Men, the big yeah. guys. Yeah, last year we had a little sample. He had a little sample of this league. And this year people know who he is because he played so well for us last year. And and now it, it's a grind. You know, it's it's uh, 72 games that we're playing. Those kids, even the same with Samu, they never play more than 40 games a year. So right now it's uh, um, it's new territory for them. They've never Knocking been through down it. that wall, right? Yeah, they have to battle through it. And again, like I said earlier, they have to do it here before they do it to the next level. And he's playing huge minutes. He's playing 25, 26 minutes a night. And uh, that's why he's here. Um, he's, um, he's learning because, you know, stuff that worked overseas might not work here. You know, being a little bit too uh, uh, careless with the puck or careless with your uh, – body position try to go north when you should go south he's learning but uh, he's been running a power play since day one he's, he's all of a power play guy he moves the puck really well it's a five on five game that he's uh, he's got he's learning through every day and uh, again it's tough for him because every team are going after him you know yeah. like you said he's not the biggest guy but it, it, it adds up, you know, we're at game, uh, we got 23 games left. So there's a lot of hockey in, this, in that body and a lot of hits that he's taking because he's a target out there. But again, it's part of the development. He's only going to come out of it better. And um, right now he's, uh, he's he's a huge part of our team. You know, again, first power play, plays 25, 26 minutes a night uh, against all the big boys on the other team. And uh, but he's got a bright future. He's 21 years old. He's a baby. So uh, it's, uh, those defensemen always take a little bit longer to develop, but I uh, like the stride that he's taking this year, and uh, he's got a bright future. Especially, yeah, when he comes over and adjustment to the North American game as well. And, and I, I think when it's all said and done this year, Lap, like he's going to take everything that has taken place this year into his off season, and that's where you see that big jump in a guy. All that knowledge he has now. He's got 400 NHL games under his belt. He's going to have 70 games in the AHL, hopefully some playoffs with you guys. Number one PP, tons of minutes. He's going to be able to reflect on that this offseason and really come in prepared, ready to go to, to, to make that hard decision for the NHL next year. All part of the learning experience those kids yeah. are going through. And that's that's better to do that here than do it at the next level when you're called up or you're staying up for, uh, you know, you're playing one out of three games and you're it's it's bad for your development. He's better here playing huge minutes and uh, playing against. It's a tough league to play in. Like uh, structurally, it's not as sound as the NHL. So, you know, you have to make plays a little bit quicker because guys are out of position. At, uh, and um, I, I think it's only good for him. That affects the goaltending too. It's it's been tough in net for you this year with Cal and uh, Felix. You know, some I've talked to a lot of goalies, as you know, and a lot of them say, "Yeah, the NHL is more predictable in what's going to happen a lot of times, but the execution is so much better. The shots are better. They're more precise. The passes, the cross ice, the way they attack you. Um, but the goaltending in the American League, there may be those structural breakdowns that aren't as um, you know, pronounced in the NHL level. Uh, how's it been trying to to keep the, the goaltending to a level where you need it? Uh, you know, with a young decor, you look at our decor, you got Samson, Tough. you got, the, you know, we talk about Andre, we got Ginning, who's a second year pro, or, you know, Ronnie, who's, you know, his second year pro, like, uh, and we lost Louis Belpedro for a while. Now he's back, which is great. And, uh, you know, you need, solid goaltending and uh, to say that we did all year that'd be lying you know if uh, we haven't but felix been uh, down the stretch here he's been playing way better and he's been uh, you know he's in that and he's confident in that and he's confident in that and and that's why they call him up you know and uh, yep. and, and cal's coming back to us and you know i talked to him and i'm like we're, we're gonna I'm, my job is to help you go back to the next level and um i got confidence in him we're gonna do everything we can to help him you know, get out of it. And I think a big part of it for me as a staff is to make sure these on coverage is as good as it can be. To give her a chance, to give her goalie a chance to get going. And I felt like lately with uh, Felix, we've been doing that. 
We're going to do the same thing with Cal to make sure his game is going to go back on track because we'll need him. At the end of the day, we're two points out with games in hand, but we need to win those games to get into the playoffs. And who knows what happened in the playoffs. But at the end of the day, you need good, solid goaltending. And it's the reality of any league in the world. You can go to junior, to midget, to peewee. You need goaltending to, to get you where you want to go. It doesn't matter what system you have. If you, uh, if you don't have goaltending, you won't go anywhere. And that's my job to make sure we're tight defensively to help Cal get his game back on track and uh, make sure we can build some momentum with him and that. I imagine that's one of the hardest things to redevelop is the confidence for a goaltender because so much of it is reliant, so much of that success is relying on that confidence. And when a guy comes back down, I think a lot of times fans go, "Oh, this guy got sent down to the AHL, and look at his numbers down there; they're they're even worse." And look, part of that I think is the the different structure, and but also part of it is that I'm in the AHL, I'm not in the AHL. I, and you got to finally get to that pivot point and go, you know what? I got to just battle my way to get back. Yeah, that's, that's, that's him. That's all in, in his ears. He's got to have that, um, I don't want to uh, use a bad word, but you need that attitude, the F attitude. Like, you yeah. know, I'll show the world that I'm an NHL goalie. Yeah. And to, to do that, he's with us. He's going to have to show everybody here that he can go to the next level. And, you know what? I'll, I got all the time in the world for him because he's such a great guy. Yeah. You know, like a, if he's a if he's an arrogant guy, if he's not a good guy, you know, you, yes, you coach him, but you're like, yeah, yeah, this guy doesn't care. But he does care, and he's a great human being, and I'm going to do everything I can to help him. I'll go back to the next level. And, um, yeah, it's it's my job to make sure we're tied defensively to make sure he's got uh, all the tools and all the momentum to go back on track, and we need him. At the end of the day, we do. You know, Parker – uh, has been doing a hell of a job here. Uh, you yeah. know, and he's, he's, you know, he's an East Coast League guy who's been all his career in the East Coast, and but he came to us and he's battling in that for us, and and he's doing a great job as a number two. But we need somebody to be a number one and run with it. And Cal's our guy right now. And and um, again, I'm going to do everything I can system wise and uh, being tight defensively to make sure he's got some success for him and for us. Man, he's going that he, I, he's thinking to himself, I'm, I'm not making this the end of my story, <laughs> you know. Yeah, like, that's that's just that's that's all on him. Like, at the end of the yeah. day, I, we everybody, yep. I can't tell him, they can't tell him, but it's got to come from within, within you. And uh, again, what a guy, great guy. And I got all time, you know, I got all the time in the world for him, and I'm gonna help him out as much as I can. You had a good, a good pack building with the fans this year, such a great, great building to be playing in the AHL. I mean, come on. <laughs> Listen, Jay, I'm spoiled. Like, you know, it's my first job as a head coach, and it's a great building. We have great fans. You know, they're supporting us. If it's a Wednesday night, we'll have a really good crowd. And you go to other places Wednesday night, there's no yeah. one there. Listen, yeah. it's um, it's a great place, great building, great fans, and uh, they're supporting us. And uh, it's, been, uh, it's been a treat to be here in the Valley for sure. Have you found the local Wegmans up there in the Valley? Oh, yeah. You better believe it. <laughs> Every day, bud. Uh, <laughs> Every day. Every day I got my Wegmans. I get I just sub by. I get I dug my little uh, butcher there. I see every day we chat hockey. He's, he's in a band, and you know I get to, you know me. I talk to every. I I like to talk to people. I'm a people person, and I uh, make friends at Wegmans here too. Which is I missed the one in Cherry Hills, but uh, I found one in uh, in Allentown. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. You know I love talking to you, man. I'm so yeah. I'm so happy that. You, I mean, look, the Flyers have played 10 defensemen already. I think there's a potential to play 11 or 12 at the NHL level. They're in a playoff position. They've played 10 D. To me, that's a testament to you and your staff. Yeah, well, I don't know, but they're doing all the job. It's, it's amazing. Like, And let's be honest, last year they did battle too. Like, you know, everybody yeah. talks about this year, but this year you had a guy like Couturier, Atkinson, like guys like that, and – you know, get and they get rid of guys that they want to be here. So at the end of the day, addition, addition by subtraction, and you go get a guy like Walker who's been playing amazing, and uh, got to give all those guys credit, starting with Torts and his group and uh, all the players they bought in, and they're fun to watch. It's great. They battle for one another. They have good goaltending. That always help. And um, yeah, it's uh, during they're during a fight, but they fight hard, which is fun to watch. Yeah, it takes an army to uh, to build a hockey player, and yeah. you're part of that as well. Uh, Lappy, thanks for doing this, man. Best of luck this weekend. Uh, appreciate it as always, and we'll talk soon. All right, thanks, buddy. Don't be a stranger. Great to catch up with Ian LaPerriere once again, one of my absolute favorite guys.
to talk hockey with and not talk hockey with and talk about other things. He's just such a great guy and he's doing a great job down there with the Phantoms. And you look at the development of Tyson Forster, Cam York, uh, Bobby Brinkett, when he goes down is getting the right instruction and the right message. Uh, and it goes on down the line. So a uh, good job by Ian LaPerriere and a tough situation down there. Like you want to win as a competitor. If they plug in the scoreboard, you want to win. Uh, but it's tough in the American league when you have your guys going up and down and inconsistency in lineup. Um, so we'll see how Lappy is able to uh, push towards the playoffs. Only a couple of points back right now. Love to see that team make it as well as the big club, the Philadelphia Flyers. Two points up for grabs tonight. Flyers caps. We'll recap it tomorrow. Plus tomorrow we'll also preview Flyers sends. The busy month is ready to begin. I am so pumped up for this month. 30 days leading up to yours truly's 52nd birthday and 15 games. If you're a hockey fan, if you're a Flyer fan, strap in. This is going to be awesome. It's going to be a great, busy month of hockey. I can't wait. Everybody, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you tomorrow on a brand new Flyers Daily.